Hey, happy Wednesday morning, everyone. Welcome back to Morning Musings. My name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma. We are, uh, we are looking at the resurrection of 1 Corinthians 15. We're doing so through the prism of the motif of martyr vindication. Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 put the resurrection discussion there in light of his then present ongoing persecution. 1 Corinthians 15, 30 and 31. Likewise, Paul in Romans chapter 8, 17 through 23 put the coming adoption, the redemption of the body, in the context of their then present suffering versus that glory that was about to be revealed. That motif is found throughout the New Testament. Well, I've been sharing with you over the last few videos of how this theme of martyr vindication, judgment, parousia, resurrection, glorification, vindication, etc. are to be found. I mean, they're, they saturate the book of Revelation. Notice now, Revelation chapter 6 the souls under the altar, those who had been slain for the word of God and the testimony which they held, they cried out, How long, O Lord, holy and true, do you not avenge us on those that are on the earth? They were given white robes. They were told to rest for a little while. Not two millennia. Not two thousand years. They were told to rest for a little while until the, fellow, uh, until the number of their fellow brethren who should be slain as they were should be fulfilled. The answer to their prayer is in verse 12 and following. It is the great and terrible day of the Lord. That motif of the vindication of those martyrs is found in chapter 12, where Satan, who is persecuting the seed of the woman, is cast down to the earth, and he has great anger because he knows what? He has only a little while. That's the little while of chapter 6. Chapter 16, we find Babylon, the great harlot city, chapter 17, 6 and following, that has killed the prophets. But her judgment will be the vindication of those prophets' martyrdom. Folks, that's nothing but Daniel chapter 12. And so we have in Revelation the promise of the vindication of the martyrs at the great, ter great and terrible day of the Lord, chapter 6, at the destruction of Satan, the great persecutors, and at the judgment of, the, of this city, Babylon. Now, in the last two videos, I've shared with you the identity of Babylon. I want to share with you, I mean, this is a really, really excellent book by Stephen Temple, who was the mother of harlots drunk with the blood of the saints. Steve has done, uh, you know, it's one, it's extremely easy reading. It, it is extremely well documented, and it shows how, how John in Revelation draws from all of these Old Testament prophecies and, and all of these Old Testament texts about the harlot. One of the best examinations of that motif of the harlot being a wife that had violated the marriage covenant, you, you will you'll be very hard pressed to find a book that does a, a better job of developing that motif. Well, what does that mean? It means that Babylon of Revelation is the wife of the Lord who had become unfaithful just like the ten northern tribes had and was about to be divorced, was about to be destroyed. When? At the coming of the Lord. Revelation 19. This Son of Man coming out of heaven, riding on a white horse, and, and the armies of heaven following him. And he has on his, on his thigh a great sword, you know, a great sword comes out of his mouth. He has a, a label on his thigh, which is the word of God. And he comes and he destroys Babylon. This is the vindication of the saints. But wait, that vindication of the saints is the destruction of Satan. It is the judgment. It is 
the great day of the Lord. Now, watch this. Revelation chapter 20. We find the martyrs, just like in Revelation 6, just like in Revelation chapter 12. Oh, by the way, chapter 11. And just like in Revelation 16 and 17 and 18, we have the martyrs given an initial victory. Just like in chapter 6, what did they have? They were given white robes. This is a sign of an initial victory. These are royal robes. Just like in Revelation chapter 20, they're given crowns. They sit on thrones. And what are they doing? They are ruling and reigning with Christ for the millennium. But what are they waiting on? Are they not waiting on their full vindication, the vindication at the day of the Lord in Revelation 6? Are they not waiting for the destruction of their persecutor, i.e. Satan? Are they not waiting for the destruction of Babylon, the one who had slain them? Yes, they were waiting on the day of the Lord. They were waiting on the day of judgment. They were waiting on the destruction of Satan. They were waiting on Resurrection, Revelation 20, 10, and following. Well, now wait a minute. You just got to catch the power of that, folks. If those in Revelation are waiting on the day of the Lord, Jesus said, Behold, I come quickly. If they're waiting on the judgment, Jesus said, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward, i.e., that's the judgment, is with me. If they're waiting on the destruction of Satan, i.e. at the end of the millennium and the coming of the Lord, Jesus said, Behold, I come quickly. If they're waiting on their ultimate vindication, when did Revelation 6 say that that ultimate vindication was coming? At the day of the Lord very soon. When did Revelation 12 say that the destruction of their persecutor was going to come? In a little while. When does Revelation 14 say that the judgment of the persecuting city Babylon was going to take place? Well, the hour of her judgment has come. And that means, folks, that means that the end of the millennium, the time of the consummate vindication of the martyrs, of all of the blood, of all of the martyrs shed on the earth from righteous Abel onward was about to be vindicated at the coming of the Lord, at the judgment, at the destruction of Satan, at the resurrection in the fall of Jerusalem in A.D. 70. Look, folks, unless, unless you're able to completely and totally divorce the judgment scene, the end of the millennium resurrection, the vindication of the martyrs from Revelation chapter 20, 10 and following, then guess what? We have definitive proof from Jesus, from Paul, and from the entire body of, Re of Revelation, that the end of the, end of the millennium, judgment, day of the Lord, destruction of Satan, and resurrection was near when John wrote. He was not talking about events 2,000 years off. He was following his Lord who said in Matthew 23 that all of the blood of all of the martyrs would be vindicated in that generation. Hey, be sure to get yourself a copy of this book, Who Was the Mother of Harlots Drunk with the Blood of the Saints. Go to my website, donkpreston.com or bibleprophecy.com and order the book. You will love this book. Hey, thanks for joining me for this morning's Morning Musings. And yes, naturally, we've got more. So we'll see you on the flip side.